In an age when the world was younger and the people simpler, there existed a quiet village in the heart of the Netherlands where the daily life of peasants was marked by toil and prayer. It was a time of innocence, where the most sinister forces often lurked behind the most mundane temptations. Enter a stranger, a well-dressed gentleman with a cunning plan, one that would challenge the very soul of this humble community. Welcome to this week's episode. As the villagers, weary from a hard day's labor in the fields, gathered under the shade of an old oak tree for their customary evening prayers, a peculiar figure approached. This man, unlike any they had seen before, exuded an air of refinement and mystery. Clad in fine garments and puffing on a gouda pipe, he emanated clouds of blue tobacco smoke that drifted lazily into the evening air. Curiosity overtook the villagers as this stranger paused at a respectful distance, seemingly admiring their work yet clearly with intentions beyond mere observation. When questioned about his presence, he introduced himself with a charismatic smile, claiming nothing more than a desire to share a delightful novelty that had the power to ease the burdens of life. With a practiced ease, the stranger, whom we shall call Mr. Van Dyne, began to extol the virtues of tobacco describing it as not just a leisurely pastime but a miraculous remedy to the day's fatigue. Smoking, he declared, drives away worries, offers diversion, and makes the long working day pass swiftly. Intrigued and enticed, the villagers listened as Mr. Van Dyne demonstrated how to pack and light their pipes. One by one, they succumbed to the temptation, finding in each puff a momentary escape from their hardships. The act of smoking quickly became more than just an afterwork relief. It invaded their work hours, filling every break and pause with billowing smoke. As days turned into weeks, the villagers found themselves increasingly dependent on their new habit. The once cherished prayer sessions grew shorter, then sporadic, and finally ceased. The spiritual fabric of the village unraveled as tobacco smoke filled the gaps once occupied by faith. Mr. Van Dyne, with his mission accomplished, began to withdraw from the village center, his visits becoming less frequent as he watched the transformation from afar. Yet, his eyes, gleaming with a mischievous light, betrayed a deeper satisfaction than that of a mere tobacco merchant. One evening, as the last rays of the sun dipped below the horizon and the villagers gathered not to pray but to indulge in their evening smoke, Mr. Van Dyne was nowhere to be seen. His absence was as sudden as his arrival, leaving behind a community transformed and perhaps forsaken. In the quiet that followed, one could not help but wonder, who truly was Mr. Van Dyne? Had the devil himself walked among them, clad in the guise of a gentleman? What had they lost in exchange for the smoke that now hung over their lives? As the story of the village fades into the echoes of the past, we are left to ponder the price of our own temptations. In our pursuit of relief and distraction, what might we be unwittingly sacrificing? Could it be that, like the villagers, we are all one temptation away from losing what we hold most dear? And who might be watching, waiting to make that fateful offer? Leave a like, consider showing your support by subscribing to the channel. Leave a comment and tell us your favorite to seize the opportunity.